Welcome to Kitchen Chemistry, a series where we do a few experiments in my home and you can copy them along in your home. Mostly in the kitchen, obviously, that's why it's called Kitchen Chemistry. This is aimed at people of all ages and so there is a mixture of different difficulty levels and different understanding levels of chemistry. But never mind about that, let's do some chemistry. If you need to know about safety, which you do, read the instructions in the text below. Jumping straight into our soap making, we will need something to put all of our materials in, so a pan. We'll need some plant oil, like this coconut oil here in my hand. Um, you might not be able to get that, so I'm going to use a more liquidy oil, like this rapeseed oil. We need some salt later on. We need some baking soda and some water, which I'm going to put in this jug here. We will also need to stir it so a wooden spoon is really handy and some way to measure the uh, salt and baking soda. I'm going to go over here and get some olive oil, which we're going to use because olive oil is allegedly really difficult to make soap out of, but I will also use the rapeseed oil. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put 200 milliliters of water in this pan here, like this. Um, we could use a lot less, but some of it gets lost while we're heating it up. Then I'm going to put two teaspoonfuls, heap teaspoonfuls of baking soda in and heat it up so that the carbon dioxide bubbles off and we convert it to sodium carbonate like we did in an earlier episode. Well, it might be a later episode for you, but a different episode. Here it goes. Obviously doing it takes longer than talking about it. Then I'm going to heat it up, get rid of the carbon dioxide. I'm being a bit generous with my 15 or yeah, 15 grams about. Then we turn it on, get it boiling. Maybe I'll speed this through this bit. So here it is at five times speed, which is a bit less boring, bubbling away and doing its stuff. That's so that when we do the next step, which is adding 50 milliliters of oil, it doesn't spray oil everywhere. That's bad and it's not very safe. And it also makes a mess that we would have to clean up afterwards. You can see Already the spitting is making white bits everywhere. So now that it's all done, pour in our 50 milliliters of olive oil in this case and heat it up to a simmer, which is boiling a little bit for about half an hour. It's important not to heat it up too much because then it sprays everywhere and will try to attack you with bits of oil, also make a mess. It's good to keep it boiling a little bit because otherwise it tends to do nothing with the oil on the surface and then suddenly boil a bit and then stop again. I experimented with using a lid or not using a lid. It didn't seem to make a lot of difference, although if you use a lid, it does keep the spray down a little bit. If you don't use a lid, you can see it doing it a bit better. I'm going to speed up the video again so it's not quite so boring. So I'm going to boil it here for about 30 minutes, at about this pace, little um, bubbles. This is five times speed. You can see me stirring it. You can also stir it with various types of whisk. So they're either a hand whisk or this um, coffee stirrer thingy, um, which is an electric one. They tend to make a lot of mess, so I would advertise using a hand little whisk thing. While you're stirring it, you will notice that it gets a little bit cloudy, and that is the soap forming. You will also notice that it starts to smell very strongly of soap, even though we're not actually making a lot. As this boils, water is being lost into my kitchen, and the concentration of sodium carbonate is going up in the solution, and eventually it will start to crystallize out, and we'll end up with a layer of sodium carbonate that typically forms on the top if you watch this video and you, it might happen to you too. That's one of the products, but we don't want that, we want the soap. This takes a really long time and it gets kind of tedious at times, but what we can see is that the mixture goes from being completely clear to having a white tinge, and that we also get bubbles starting to form, and that's a good sign that we're making soap. If we didn't have any soap in there, the oil and water would separate again into two layers just like they are at the beginning. At the moment it's not great, you can see that there's not a lot happening. You can also see a bit of solid forming. But eventually, if you don't lose too much water, 
it will start to foam up a little bit, just like if you'd added soap to it. This is the good part. It stays like this for a really long time, so we'll go fast again. As you can see, the amount of foam goes up and up and up, and eventually we run out of patience about after an hour and add our salt, which is about a teaspoonful. Try to dissolve it again, and then we let it cool down again. That allows some material to drop out. You can see it's getting stiffer and stiffer now and there's some kind of solid in there. Most of that is the sodium carbonate, but there are also other things. This is a nice bit where it makes a weird pattern on the surface, probably caused by carbonate forming and being trapped in the soap or interacting with the soap in some way. After an hour, I'm going to take it off the heat. I tried it for a bit longer. I tried it for up to two hours. It didn't seem to make a lot of difference, so an hour seems to be plenty. Take it off the heat and let it cool down on my hob so it can't cause any damage. You can see all the bits of spray nearby. Then I'm going to pour it into this cup so that we can see what we've got. We can see that we've got lots of white solid material and there's a yellow um, sort of liquid, which is probably the rest of the oil. At this point, we're kind of done. We can't really get much further. We've made some soap, but it's unfortunately mixed with oil and sodium carbonate. What we can see here is my olive oil version on your left, my right, and the rapeseed oil version on your right, my left. I'm going to pour the olive oil through this filter and collect those particles. That worked quite well. The other one you can see is all cloudy, and even if you leave it to stand for a really long time, the cloudiness doesn't go away, and that's because the soap is trapping water in the oil that's left over. Unfortunately, uh, even after trying to extract the soap in various different ways, or do it for longer, or leave it standing around for a week, nothing really got much better, and so I decided to stop the demonstration there. It's not really possible to make useful soap in this way, but we can make soap. You can smell that it's definitely soap. It smells just like natural soaps made out of the oils that you have, but unfortunately we can't get the oil out and we can't make pure soap in this manner. What have we done here? We've taken some oil which is sketched up in the top left in a chemical way, so it's a chain of carbon and hydrogens, and this important functional group, which is what we're going to attack, which is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and a single bond to another oxygen, which is connected to the rest of the molecule. So if we zoom in on that, we see the bit that's to the right of our little box that says oil, and that's just the bit that we're going to attack. And we're going to attack it with an OH-, minus, which is a hydroxy group. But we don't have any of those, so we've got to explain how we got those. If we take our reaction of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which we had before, we can form from two hydrogen car uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate molecules, we can form one disodium carbonate. And the carbonate can react with water to form carbon dioxide and two OH minuses. It doesn't do this very much, but a little bit is all we need to get our soap reaction going. Zooming in on the soap reaction at the top left, we can see the OH- attacks. It kicks some electrons out. It breaks a bond, one of the two bonds to the double bond oxygen, making the second thing where the arrow points to. So now we've got our OH attached to our molecule, and we've got an O- at the top. The oxygen has got the electrons. And that doesn't last very long. It attacks back in and kicks out the chemical on the right instead of breaking the one on the bottom. It could actually do either, but if it broke the one on the bottom, we'd be back where we started and it could just attack it again. If we break the one on the right, we end up with a broken molecule. And that is the precursor of our soap. First of all, we have to move the H that I've put in the dotted box over to where the O minus is, because that is a more stable state. Now we've got the fatty acid, which is a chain of carbons written at the bottom, chain of carbons 
double bondo, single bondo, that's an acid, but it's not got a hydrogen on it. And instead of having a hydrogen on it, it's associated with a different ion, which would be the sodium from the sodium carbonate or from the salt that we added. And we would have the rest of the molecule. We can do this three times to every oil molecule because each of those three oil chains are exactly the same. And we would end up with a molecule called glycerol and the soap. The glycerol is difficult to remove from our soap product, as is the oil and as is the water, which is why we can't really get any further here. But it's not about the result, it's about doing some chemistry. So we can show that we can make some soap, we just unfortunately can't do anything with it. This is a fairly common effect in chemistry laboratories too, that you make a product that's so dirty, it's very difficult to go anywhere with it. And you have to do some complicated stuff to get your product out of everything else that you've made. So I've been trying to extract the soap from my mixture for a little while and I found a few things. As you can see in this other video, if I extract it with ethanol, with my um, fire type of ethanol, so I put the ethanol in, give it a shake, let it settle and take the ethanol layer off then I can make this, also in this video, I can make this extract, which is almost completely soap. It's not very much, however. So we can look at the other part, which is the solid, and add a little bit of acid to it. This is vinegar. So we add a little bit of acid to it, and we can see that it fizzes. So it was mostly the sodium carbonate. But if I leave it for a long time and add some salt, then we can see that a solid drops out. And this over here is the final result of that now filtered. This demonstrates something that I wanted to show you and that I wanted you to discover in this process, which is the salt effect. Soap is a salt of sodium and the um, iron of the fatty acid. And if we add another sodium salt, which in this case is salt, sodium chloride, we can make the soap less soluble. That means the soap drops out of solution and forms a solid. So if we add salt again, I've added plenty of salt again to my acid, then all of the other sodium salts form a solid and drop out because sodium chloride is the most soluble sodium salt in the mixture. Then I can make more soap without losing so much. This is a very lossy process, however. I haven't got a lot in here. You can see, if I show you this, uh, I can now extract it and show you. And I've made a lighter gray substance, which is far slimier than before. It behaves a lot more like soap. It smells a bit vinegary because it's now got quite a lot of vinegar in it. I can let that dry and make soap out of it. I might do that. This is the liquid that was left over and you can see most of the color that was in the solid is now in this liquid, which is actually the color from the olive oil originally. So that is now in the water. On the top, we can see there's some oil. So again, my separation is still very bad my soap is going to be quite oily, which is the reason that I couldn't get any foam when I mix my other soap, the one that I extracted with ethanol, with water and mixed it up. You can see it dissolves here and forms a white solution, which is exactly what you would expect for soap, but it's not as foamy as you would expect for soap. That has two reasons. One reason is these type of sodium soaps are not as foamy as normal soap. If you use natural soap at home, because I don't know where you come from, you will discover that it's comparatively less foamy than a, an artificial, more artificial soap. If we have a bit of oil in there, it will also destroy the foaming capability of the soap. So the two things that I want to gather from this are the reaction between the soda, soda sodium carbonate that we made from the sodium hydrogen carbonate, but it's the baking soda, with the plant oil, which is 
an ester of an alcohol and an acid and it breaks that to form the acid and the alcohol. The acid then reacts with the soda again to form the um, salt and that salt we can make drop out of solution by adding one or the other of the two ions and the one that is most obvious is sodium. So we add sodium plus ions to our salt. I'm holding it weirdly because my fingers are all greasy. We add sodium salt to our mixture and that causes the soap to drop out of solution. But unfortunately it also causes the sodium carbonate to drop out of solution which is why we end up with a mixture. Obviously if we were going to make this commercially we would not use sodium carbonate 